Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today I'm excited to welcome Preston Soto of the Elegant Oxford here to uh, Kirby Allison. Uh, Preston, hey, thank you so much for uh, coming Thanks, and joining Kirby. us. So, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm just so excited. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. So of yeah. course, I'm sure everyone knows Preston Soto of the Elegant Oxford. I mean, you know, really, uh, you know, just like with us, I mean, you've got one of the, you know, kind of the you know, preeminent, you know, shoe shine channels. That's crazy and to hear. I just, I, I really think it's like a joke that people actually want to watch my videos. Well, we watch yeah. them, and uh, I think that you've really done a great job. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks. I you know, of course, that. you kind of share our same passion for helping the well-dressed, you know, really kind of um, take care of their wardrobes and especially kind of shine their shoes. And uh, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of have you in the office and, you know, for us to just kind of talk shop. Yeah, so. I'm so excited to have some fun and shine shoes. Yeah, so thanks for joining. Yeah. So this is our Shoe Shine Sunday segment, you know, where we kind of sit down. It's kind of like uh, cars and coffee. Sure. And so, um, you know, we each have a, a special pair of shoes we brought with us, and we'll kind of shine them and an opportunity for us to kind of talk Great. shop. And then I'd yeah. love to hear more, of course, about kind of your background and how you got into this. Absolutely. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, share with us a little bit about the shoes that you brought uh, with you to share with us. Okay, Kirby. Well, actually, uh, people always ask me how the Elegant Oxford got started. Mm -hmm. In 2017, when I graduated from college, I got a little bit of extra money. And I was at Nordstrom with my wife. She was buying a dress for graduation. And I saw a pair of, well, I saw this pair of Allen Edmund strands, and I thought, that's a really nice pair of shoes. I want to buy that pair. So I, I, I went ahead and got fitted, and I, and I bought them, and I walked across the stage with them, and uh, that's kind of where it started. Okay, yeah. so this is like your first Yeah, you know, my nice first big of, boy pair yeah. of shoes, yeah. That's amazing. And you know, Alan Edmonds is, you know, that's such a um, common story with Alan Edmonds. Sure. It's one of yeah. the reasons we speak so much about him here, you know, at Kirby Allison's, because, I mean, Alan Edmonds, uh, for so many people, is their first entry uh, into really high-quality Goodyear welted shoes. Right, right. Uh, and a pair of Allen Edmonds, uh, regardless of what you think about them, you can't deny that if you take care of them and polish them, they look great and can last you uh, the rest of your life. Absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, I've got a pair of, um, this is a pair of bespoke Foster & Sons shoes. Um, so, you know, Foster & Sons is kind of one of the three, uh, you know, West End bespoke shoemakers. And this is the first pair of brown shoes, bespoke shoes, I ever had. Those made. are beautiful. And so this is no a semi brogue. Yeah, really, it's similar in in style to you know this shoe right here. This right. Trend. And right. so uh, it's interesting to see how two different makers can make what is essentially the same shoe, sure, yeah, but totally different. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so this was um, a real. It was a crust leather uh, that they finished during the making process. And so it still kind of needs some polish to kind of help produce that patina. Great, yeah. And so that's uh, kind of what I'm still working on. Yeah, so. those, they look great now, but they're going to look even better. Yeah, and I love wearing them, and so they've gotten a lot of use in yeah. just the short amount of time I've had them. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. So I guess let's get started. So okay. uh, what are you going to use? So I think it's always interesting to, to know what polish uh, someone wants to use because... Um. As you know, and speak on your channel, there's so many different ways to take a pair of shoes. Absolutely. There's a million different ways to take care of your shoes. And um, these are really light brown. So I like using uh, light brown uh, by Saphir. It's a really good color. I think mm -hmm. it just fits perfectly with the shoe. Um, but since they do have a patina at the toe, um, I am going to use dark brown um, wax to mirror gloss to make sure mm -hmm. that they, uh, they look great and, and presentable. Okay. So uh, this toe will get darker, but um, yeah. not, not, not too much. Okay. Do you burnish a lot of your shoes? I mean, would you help? Uh, yeah, I do. Them or? I do like burnishing them. I, I started using just polish, but now I, I dye the, the, the toe, the toe okay. caps to make them uh, permanent. Oh, really? okay. I like doing that so it's permanent. This will come off. Um, some, yeah, the polish will. Yeah, the I polish mean, will nothing come is off. permanent with polish. Right. It's one of the things I tell people. Absolutely. Like, you can't mess yeah. them up. You know, you can't, but you know, sure. very few yeah. things are uh, irreversible. Right. The dye is permanent, though, so I tell people, make sure you know what you want or yeah. it's going to be on there forever. That's right. So. Well, this is a really interesting brown, and it's honestly, it kind of fits in between kind of a medium brown, which I'm going to use maybe for to kind of help, you know, antique kind of maybe the toe or the heels, and really kind of a cognac. So mm. I'm going to start with cognac since it's the lighter and kind of the safer of the colors, and then just kind of see where this pair goes. Great. And that's Can't again, go wrong. kind yeah. of one of the fun things about a shining a pair of shoes is yeah. seeing it evolve over time. Right, that's the best part. So you've taken your laces out. Uh, I like to leave my laces in, especially on kind of bespoke yeah. shoes. So so do I. Yeah, um, this is just for the special occasion. Yeah, to get those laces out. Well, tell us. I mean, help. I mean, so I guess share with me, Preston, a little bit more about kind of how you got started and 
I mean, it's been kind of a journey for you. I mean, you've had your channel for a while, and you've really kind of broken through the threshold and yeah. getting a lot of love from YouTube. And yeah. Well, uh, originally I joined um, a Facebook group all about Alan Edmonds, and I started, you know, I was obsessed with this pair, so I kept shining them and making sure they looked their best. And someone said, hey, will you shine my shoes? And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll charge you $10, and you send them to me, and I'll shine them. And uh, people started really asking, oh, will you shine my pair? And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take them. And that's kind of where it started. And uh, I had I learned a lot on the job. I think I, I actually yeah. uh, had to make sure well, that. Well, that's the uh, best way. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Absolutely. Uh -huh. um, we had. Uh, but when did you start filming? I mean, like, what was it that, you know, you, you're on the Alan Edmonds enthusiast page, and people are admiring your work, and, you know, you go from that to okay, well, you know, for ten bucks I'll shine a pair of shoes to saying, well, you know, let me film this. Okay. This is really embarrassing. I don't remember the first video that I ever recorded or why. I think it's it was a natural progression of just taking pictures into, mm -hmm. I'll just record a video here and I'll record a video there. And uh, I think everyone's dream today is like, get a YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think that's kind of where it started. Really? I thought, okay. yeah, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to um, film tutorials and start filming me shining shoes. And uh, that's kind of where it started. And how did the name Elegant Oxford, like how did, what inspired you there? You know, all I remember was thinking I need a good name. So I was thinking <laughs> the Burnished Brogue, the, uh, the beautiful Balmore. I was thinking I of all these names. Names are difficult, right? And then uh, I don't remember when exactly, but at some point I, I came up with the Elegant Oxford and, and I just stuck with that. Yeah. And it uh, rolls off the tongue, so I just kind of stuck with that, yeah. So a similar story with the Hanger Project. I mean, I was trying to come up with a clever name. I was yeah. like, do I call it Gentleman's Hanger? Or, yeah, or, yeah. And it really it was like a challenge for me. And I remember my roommate at the time said, well, why don't you just call it what you've been calling it the entire time, right. which is the Hanger Project. Simple and clean. And I was like, well, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. You know? um, so what, I mean, tell, talk to me a little bit about, you, you, you're from San Diego. Right. I mean, what's kind of influenced you to, you know, even be into leather dress shoes? Okay, um, yeah, I was, I was born and raised in San Diego. Um, I think my parents had a, a lot to do with uh, me liking shoes mm -hmm. since I was uh, really young. My, 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 in fact, this might surprise a lot of people. My dad, but my mom also. She was really um, adamant that we dress our best and, and wear our Sunday best all the time. And okay. my dad would take us to Tijuana, Mexico, mm -hmm. where they would sell Goodyear welted shoes for kids. So yeah. little tiny Goodyear welted yeah. shoes. And I hated them. They were, to me, uncomfortable. And I thought, Dad, I, I don't want to wear these shoes. But he was like, son, you got to make sure you look your best and that you wear a little white shirt and tie and that you always present yourself well. And uh, that's kind of where it advice. started. Yeah. yeah. And I would always see his shoe shine box in his closet. It was this old uh, shoe shine box and uh, he had a bunch of creams in there and he would shine his old floor shine imperials that he had. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He had an old pair that he bought in, uh, it was the first thing he ever bought with his first job. Really? Yeah. He had a, a brother-in-law who had a really nice pair of shoes that he was really jealous of. Okay. And my dad was, was poor at the time and couldn't afford a pair. And he told me the first thing he ever bought was a pair of Florsheim and really? for $99. Wow. And he had them until about 2010. And I asked him a couple years, Dad, where are your Florsheims? I want to see them. He's like, oh, son, I gave those away. Really? He just, uh, he's really, he just, yeah. he's so simple. He just didn't even think about it. He said, oh, yeah. I just gave them away. It's a famous pair of shoes. I mean, yeah. anyone that's not familiar with the Florsheim Imperials, I mean, it's a, kind of has a cult following. Sure. And uh, a lot of people love that vintage uh the vintage look and uh, the quality of those vintage pairs, and I, and I really like them. I have a couple pairs myself. Hmm. So that's really uh, something else. Yeah, and you you really hit on something that uh, I you know that I've heard consistently through your channel, which is you know that you know really at the end of the day, you know shining your shoes is about more than having just a shiny pair of shoes. Absolutely. So, I mean, talk to me a little bit about that and kind of what your thoughts are there. Um, I think shoes are analogous to life. Um, depending on how you care for your shoes, in 10 years your, your shoes will either look really amazing or they'll look really bad. And I think that's just kind of how life works. If you take care of yourself, make good choices, um, conduct yourself properly and well, um, your life um, will end up in a different place than if mm -hmm. you didn't. And I think shining your shoes is, is uh, reminds me of that every day. Really? Um, helps me to maintain my focus, to remember that um, responsibility, accountability, and hard work are, are, are really important. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that my parents taught me, and, and uh, 
when I was younger, I wish I could could forget, but now it's it's just what my life's about, and I yeah. try the best I can to <clears throat> to uh, to do that. With, and shoes remind me of that. So um, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting proxy, you know, shining your shoes. I mean, for one, it's one of the first thing people notice, and. Um, you know, so it really is, I mean, people talk about putting your best foot forward. I sure. mean, it really is putting your best foot forward, just having a nicely shined pair of shoes. Absolutely. But it's also just showing that you can take care of something and that, yeah. you know, you put enough thought into your presentation that, uh, you know, you shined your shoes and, you know, it's a, just as much about respect for others as it is respect for oneself. Yeah. Uh, my dad told me the other day when he and my mom were dating, she told him, Robert, the first thing a woman notices about a man are his shoes. Yeah. And uh, he said, Everyone says that. You yeah. Kind of, you, you kind of like discredit that. And you're yeah. like, ah, that's not true. But it really is true. Yeah. And uh, he told me that story. And he was like, you know what? I never forgot your mom told me that. And ever since then, I made sure my shoes were always looking presentable <laughs> in front of I have so a that friend that uh, you know, was a really high in sales uh, person at IBM. Yeah. And like, you know, the type of sales reps that make hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars. And he, he said that his mentor took him into his closet once and pointed out two black, round, bald spots in the carpet. And he said, you know, do you have any idea what these are? And he was like, no idea. He said, this is where, for the past 30 years, I've shined my shoes every morning. And so the two bald spots were where the brush would go on wow. kind of either side of the shoe. That's, that's, pretty, and, that's pretty awesome. You know, again, I just, you know, he said that at IBM, you know, and he ultimately, like, started doing work in the military. Yeah. You know, that, you know, any senior person in the military, they'd shake your hand, and the first thing they'd do is look at your look shoes. Down. And it yeah. was a sign of trust. Sure. You know, that, you know, of dignity and trust as to whether or not you could take care of, you know, your entire, you know, your entire self. Yeah, yeah. It's not something your grandpa just said, oh, you know, shine your shoes, make sure your shoes look shined. It's, it's really something that can reminds you to take care and to be the best version of yourself. There's yeah, you no hear those that. nuggets of wisdom and, you know, they really, they came about for a reason, right? Sure. I mean, yeah. over time. Absolutely. And, uh, I agree with you that. You know, there's, there's truth to those, you know, even the most simple kind of sayings, right? Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I guess when you're young, you don't really care about that stuff. You're like, oh, my dad's just talking nonsense. But as you get older and you start to have life experience, you start to make choices that matter, I think you really, I mean, at least I was reminded of of shining my shoes. So uh, when I saw those, when I saw this pair at, at Nordstrom, something inside of me was like, oh, I got to get a, my first pair of nice shoes, and yeah. I did. So. so where did you learn how to shine? I mean, so you started kind of, you got your first nice pair of shoes, and you um, know, I mean, how did you? I mean, just trial and error. Like, where did yeah, you turn to? I mean, I, I remember I would watch um, Justin Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a video about mirror shines, and I thought they looked so cool. I thought I'm going to try that. And I failed the first time. I couldn't get it down. Yeah, tough, I tried right? again and again, and it just wouldn't work for me. And um, I went to Walmart, and I had a, just a <coughs> tin of kiwi, and that's just how I started. Uh, in fact, I think uh, I did. I'm not, I did shine this pair with kiwi for the first time. And once I got the mirror shine down, I thought I have to keep trying it. And mm -hmm. it just kind of came by itself, kind of trial and error, and a lot of error mostly. But um, What are your tricks? I mean, do you have any tricks of the trade for kind of your um, mirror shine? Yeah, I, well, I don't know if they're tricks. But I, I just never mentioned. I mean, them. everyone has their own method right, yeah. that kind of evolves. In I've never mentioned this in, mentioned this in a video, but I'm going to. Um, using your breath to add some moisture when doing a mirror shine really helps me. So okay. You, and then you start buffing again, and it really brings out that shine. And at what stage in the mirror shine process are you doing that? Once you've used water and um, some wax for a while, you can start using your breath to kind of bring out that shine and, and make it look really nice. Um, I should have mentioned that before, but I've, it's never crossed my mind. But that's kind of the secret I have. Okay. Kind of, Would you uh, put a mirror shine on a pair of shoes like this? Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually going to do that today. Okay. I know some people don't like putting mirror shines on shoes. Uh, with broguing? With broguing, but I, I think it's fine. I think and every I cap looks better with a nice, beautiful shine. Right, to it, I agree with it? you, yeah. It, here we go. I'll just start a little, little buff in here. Do you play around much with different colors? I do. I like using burgundy. Um, on my dark brown shoes. Yeah, because we're both wearing burgundy shoes today. Yeah. I noticed that. When That's one of my favorite things to do. I like to bring out that deep, rich color, so mm -hmm. I use burgundy on dark brown. Um, a dark brown, you'll use burgundy? Yeah, I'll use burgundy, and it kind of brings out um, kind of a depth, kind of a, a complex look, and I really I really like doing that. What colors will you use on a burgundy shoe? Will you use black? On, if, on the toe cap, if it's darker, yeah, I might use a little bit of, of, of black or dark brown. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I think red, Hermes Red is probably the one I use the most for On your burgundy shoes. shoes? Yeah, my burgundy. I like really? to bring out the red tones. Okay. And I found that uh, 
for Bordeaux kind of has purplish, uh, mm. darker it's tones. a lot of purple, yeah. Yeah, so I like bringing out those red tones. I think it's really... Um, what about mahogany? Have you, ever, have you ever tried mahogany? No, I've never tried mahogany. I'm going to have to try that one of these days. Um, there we go. When I, uh, I lived in Mexico for two years. Okay, and, where? Uh, in Tamaulipas, Tampico. Okay. I was a missionary there. Okay. And I would go to the to downtown. There was guys shining shoes there. And uh, I would never, I never forgot the sound of the brush going back and forth. Isn't it great? It's just really awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I would go down there and look for shoes, and um, like, you know what? I never remembered this before, but I actually liked shining my shoes when I was a missionary. Really? Like, okay. I had a companion, and we would go to flea markets on, mm -hmm. on our on our preparation day, and I told him, "Let's go to a flea market and find a pair of shoes to shine." And we found an old vintage pair of Johnson and Murphy wingtips. They were brown. And we went to a local shoe shiner at the, at the square, and he uh, he shined them for us. Really? And, that's a good and did memory. you wear them? He wore them because they were nine and a half, and okay. they were too big for me. And uh, I don't know if he still has them. That's I haven't interesting. kept up with them. But that would be an interesting question. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you've done this on your channel. We've done it on ours. You know, kind of the eBay challenge or thrift right. store challenge. And again, it's to me, it's you know, just a, kind of a great testament to that. You know, you can find something that's really been discarded by someone else. Sure. And with just a little bit of love and a little bit of polish, you can totally renew it and rejuvenate that, yeah, that absolutely. shoe. Yeah, Yeah, I love doing that. It's one of the, uh, and I think people like seeing that. They like seeing a pair that looks terrible and mm -hmm. looks like you could throw it away, and then when you restore it, you shine it. Um, it looks so different. People are like, can, is that the, really the same? I had people. I've had people accuse me of getting, uh, yeah, of switching, of, of switching and switch. shoes. And that's I tell funny. them, well, that's kind of a compliment. If you really think I've switched the shoes, then I think I've done my job well because uh, the shoes look that different. Really? Yeah, but I've obviously I've never switched shoes. It's just... Yeah, um, well, it just is a, a, gr a great il illustration of, yeah. of um, you know, the, the transformation that sure. just some polish can do. It's like life. I think I see this with guys who buy brand new cars. Mm -hmm. They'll buy a brand new car, they're really excited about it, and it gets dirty after a year, and they're like, oh, I don't like this car anymore. I just tell them, go wash it and wax it, and then they do, and they're like, wow, the car looks like... I remember how much I like this car. It's like, take care of the things you have. And you'll always uh, you'll always appreciate them more. Yeah, that's yes. the same of anything, even relationships yeah. and uh, friendships, especially. Yeah. Um, friendships are hard work. You have to yeah. make sure you maintain that friendship, and that's kind of uh, true of a lot of things. Nothing good comes easy. Yeah, not yeah, an education, not marriage, nothing. Yeah. It's We're all judged through our good works, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, it's important to uh, you know make sure you, you care and, and do that. Mm -hmm. So um, this is coming out. This is a really good brush. Yep, that's one of our. You you said you like the stiffer bristle, yeah. so that's our pig bristle brush. Wow, I really I, I like the I sent you some shine. horsehair ones, but uh, we'll have to send you some pig bristle. Yeah, th this is really great. You know, pig I, bristle is. Um, yeah. It's hard to find in a long pinning length, mm. right? So the length of the bristle, you have to double the length, right? Yeah. Plus some because it's folded in half. Right. And so to find a bristle that. You know, it's like three inches long. Yeah. It takes a domesticated pig. Sure, yeah. And, you know, there's just not many domesticated pigs around anymore. Right. Um, but it produces a nice, stiff bristle texture without being so stiff yeah. that, you know, like this is a pig bristle brush, but look how much shorter that is. And it's almost too know. abrasive. Like, you, right. know, you wouldn't want to use too that. Right, would be abrasive. Um, you know, for a shoe shine. Yeah. This works really great. I'm really impressed by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think we're we, good. we try to... You know, I mean, I feel like the accoutrement that you use makes a big difference. Sure. I, I mean, not just in the quality of the polish, right? We're using good polish. Right. But also the quality of the things that you use. And I think it kind of goes back to taking care of things. I think yeah. that if you surround yourself with items of quality and you take care of them, then it allows them to last longer, which yeah. builds a meaning. Sure. And all of a sudden, you know, you own less, but of a higher quality. Yeah, to me it's a, it's kind I agree. Of a philosophy yeah. of simplification. And you know what? I fought Saphir for a long time. Really? I just did not want to use it. Everyone was <laughs> telling me Saphir's the best, and I thought it's not. I used Kiwi. I was really loyal to Kiwi, and I used it for years. And then um, I had a member of the Allen Edmonds Enthusiast page send me some cream, some Saphir cream, and uh, he told me just use it on my shoes, and if you like it, you can keep it or you can send <laughs> it back. And I tried it, and I'm not kidding. The first time I brushed the shoe, um, you were like, "Wow!" Yeah, it just it really. I mean, it made a I mean, difference. Your tools matter, right? Yeah. I mean, so that's funny. Um, no doubt. And then I never went back. And it, well, it also really does make it. I mean, it takes better care of the leather, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it makes shining the shoes easier. Sure. And it lasts longer too. Yeah. Do you find it's more persistent? Yeah, and I also found I get mirror shines uh, much faster. So I cut my order times in half. 
Um, uh, other creams just take me a long time. So how many shoes will you shine a week? Because that's how you kind of predominantly make your money is through actually shining shoes on the, yeah. you know, um, that you film on the YouTube channel. Sure. But yeah. people send them to you. Right. I get, uh, I get orders um, from everywhere. Um, some local guys, but mostly from in, in through the mail. And um, if uh, if I really get down to brass tacks, I can get uh, some orders. I can get a sh you know a pair or two a day. Really? Yeah. But okay. usually um, I do a lot less because I like to take my time. <clears throat> and do you film everything you shine mostly, or just? No, I uh, I don't film everything I shine. I try to film what I think people would find interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Um, pairs that are pretty popular. I mean, I know the Strand is a popular pair. I get a, a lot of requests to, to film that that shoe um, as well. Do you use different techniques on different pairs? Um, no, I, I, I think I go the same with, unless it's Shell Cordovan, it's mostly all the same. So you've got your own chamois. Yeah. You use, so you were saying, what do you use for your chamois? Okay, so people is... always email me and they're like, where do you get your chamois or your cloth? And I tell them, well, I just go to Walmart and I buy an extra, extra, extra large cotton t-shirt and I cut it up into strips and that's what I use. Really? Yeah, and it's always and worked for me. Any superstitions or anything with your chamois? Um, I don't know. No superstitions no. now. No, I, I think as long as it's uh, cotton, well, I mean, sometimes I use stuff that's not even 100% cotton and it works. Really? Yeah. Uh, an yeah. old t-shirt or something, I just cut it up and use that. And uh, you know, it's funny, the chamois is really so important. I mean, it's like we've got the high shine chamois, yeah. and, um, which is funny, like, I mean, the original genesis for this was a friend of mine who would cut up his old dress shirts. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, for someone that doesn't have an old white cotton, cotton dress shirt they want to cut up, um, we have our high shine chamois. Yeah, that's is, a really good idea. It's kind of like the secret, I mean, you, the chamois you use really does make a big difference on the shine process. Right. I mean, not to be, uh, you know, overstated in any no, way. No, yeah, no, I mean, um, I'm going to have to give that thing a try. Cause I want to see what uh, what I can do with it. Here we go. Get that wax open. So, any other influences? I mean, what's I mean, what's been the biggest kind of surprise for you? You know, now that you've been, you're you know, you're kind of here. You're shining shoes professionally. You know, you're you've got a presence on YouTube, and you're yeah. actually having a positive impact for people. Um, when people I meet someone new, and they'll be like, "So, what do you do for a living?" I'm like, "How do I tell them I shine shoes? How do I tell them that?" I just shine shoes all day, and sometimes I say it, and they're like, what do you mean? And then I have a chance to tell them, oh, at the Elegant Oxford, I shine shoes, and I show them pictures, and that's when they get really interested. They're like, oh, these are, these are really cool. I, yeah. I, I, uh, it's like we did three million views last month. Yeah, <laughs> and um, a big thing is uh, I tell them about the donation campaign I run. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. So when I was, um, so this all started with my dad, and this goes back to a story. We were crossing the border back to San Diego after we went down there mm -hmm. for some tacos and some shoes. And there were these kids playing soccer with, I think it was like an old can. And I had just gotten a new soccer ball and I really loved it. And my dad took it out of my hands and threw it out the window at the kids and they took the soccer ball and started playing. And I was so <laughs> upset with him. I was like, Dad, why did you throw my soccer ball away? That was my soccer ball. I started yeah. crying. I was really young. Yeah. I was so upset at him. And uh, he didn't say anything back. He just stayed silent, but he taught me a lesson that, um, I don't know, I guess give, try to give where you can. And he, he'll, uh, I mean, I have no <laughs> doubt, he, he's never told me, but I, he gave his floor shine imperials to someone who needed them. I mean, that's just who my dad is. But, yeah, um, wow, that's amazing. He, um, he kind of got, got this idea of giving shoes away where we can, I mean, he goes, he's a thrift shopping king of all kings. He, he'll go to thrift shops and he'll find stuff. I'm like, Dad, how did you find that? And he's like, oh, I don't know, son. I just went to go look for records and I found this pair of really nice shoes. And uh, he's like, how about you restore them and I find someone who needs them? And that's kind of how it started. Really? Okay. So now what I try to do is um, people donate shoes to me and I restore them and then um, I give them away where, where I can to, to... How do you find, like, how do you... That's a good how question. How do you select who you give them away um, to? Usually they're people I know or people that I've met in person, but if I do like an online donation, um, I'll have them email me, just tell them me a little bit about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually had my first donation, official donation through the Elegant Oxford was to a student who was attending Ohio State, but he was from uh, Africa, I think. Mm. And uh, I donated a pair of um, Fifth Avenues, or they were Byron's, they're really yeah. similar. And uh, that's kind of where it kind of took off. I thought, oh, I like doing that. So it's not huge, but... You know. How many pairs do you think you've given away? Hmm. 
probably 25 to 30. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I know it's not huge. I mean, I'm well, sure that's a lot people, of shoes, yeah. Yeah, I try to give them a... And so you will shine them and restore them and... Yeah. I, I can't do anything with the sole. So if yeah. they're really bad, uh, I can't do anything. If they're, you know, just a little used, I'll, I'll put sole savers on mm -hmm. them. Um, but then I shine them and restore them and everything and, and give them away. And uh, it's really fun finding people who need a pair and, and I give them to them. That's and so talk about, you just did something on eBay. I guess talk a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, I was contacted by another YouTube channel, uh, Trenton and Heath, mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to look for a really ugly, beat up pair with terrible soles, and we wanted to restore them as, as best we could and then um, sell them with the, the proceeds going to, to charity. And um, we looked and looked, and we couldn't find a pair that was really beaten up. And we found a pair of, of strands that were they had holes in the bottom, and the leather was completely messed up. I and mean, I, the before picture was pretty yeah, dramatic. And I told Trent, I was like, this is the pair. We have to get this pair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it, I thought it was going to be like $10, but it wasn't. It was a little more expensive than that. But we You got, got them on eBay? We got them on eBay. <coughs> yeah. And uh, they put, There was like a bidding war between you, yeah. know, you and me. I was like, I need that for my $50 eBay challenge. Right. There were two of them, and I told him, uh, 10D is, is a, good, a good size. So let's get these 10D ones. And uh, they got them and resold them with JR Soles and mm -hmm. uh, Triumph Brass Toe Taps. Yeah. Just, just like our shoe restoration program. Right, was. right. And I think, um, yeah, we were one of the first people to start using the Triumphs. Yeah, and, and you know, I had never actually seen a pair in person. So they sent them over and I pulled them out of the box and I was like, wow, these are really, really impressive looking. And I told my dad, Dad, do you want to see a, a really. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to see a, a really like a, a hundred and twenty dollar resale job or a two hundred dollar resale job? He's like, okay, son. And I showed him to him. He's like, whoa, these are really amazing looking. Yeah. And well, in the uh, JR leather, I mean, again, you know, speaking of kind of quality, you know, it lasts two or three times longer than traditional outsoles. So you end up having to resole it less often. Yeah. And you know? uh, and they're hard to find. I mean, that's. I mean, we we have a factory tour of JR Rindenbach that you should watch. I mean, it's. Um, you know, they flew us out to Germany yeah. to go visit oh, the factory. Wow, Germany. And it's incredible to think that, you know, they, um, you know, those outsoles take nine to 12 months to 10. No way, I and, didn't know and, that. And pits in the ground. You're kidding. And all they use are like most bark, spruce bark. It's like three or four different types of bark. Wow. It's all there is. Yeah, from what and that's, yeah, they're that's all it takes to tan it. Yeah, you know, from what no I've, chemicals. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, so the shoes came in and, uh, I was like, I hope I don't mess the uppers up. Because if I mess the uppers up, there's no going back. So I thought, what am I going to do with them? And I decided to uh, dye them a, a nice medium brown. Okay. And then put some burnishing on the toe and around certain areas. So how long did you spend on those shoes, you reckon? Uh, like, how, like, you know. Like money-wise? No, no, no. Oh, just time. How, how much time did, do you think you spent on those shoes? Uh, it took about two days of dyeing okay. and then shining. With kind of like breaks in between. Yeah, yeah, and I'd get on other pairs. And I found that when you're mirror shining, you can only go so far in one sitting. Mm -hmm. And then you have to stop and just let it rest overnight. Yeah. And uh, I did that a couple of times. And uh, we put them up for sale. And I thought, well, I put a bid and I started at 99 cents. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll be okay if we get $100. That's totally fine. And I put them on and five not even five minutes later, they were at $400. And I was like... <laughs> I, I was like, this is, must be a, I thought, I, re, I was like, maybe that said 40 And I looked really close on my phone and it said $400. And I thought, this must, this must be a joke. There was like a bunch of bids and I was shocked. So who ended up winning them? Do you know where they were from? Um, I think they're from Indiana. Okay. And um, I was You're really going to deliver them personally? <laughs> uh, I wish I could. You know, for eight hundred dollars, you yeah. can just fly out there. I I was just blown away that people cared that much that they yeah. actually were like, I want a pair. I, I don't know if the guy's gonna wear them or whoever bought them's gonna wear them, but um, I'm glad. Well, the that, money's going to charity too. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm glad someone. Um, well, multiple people were interested in uh, doing that, so that was really a really neat experience. It was really humbling to see that people watch my channel. Like I still mm -hmm. think that somewhere. These are just fake robots just watching my, you know, like they comment, yeah. but I'm like, maybe they're not real. Maybe they're just, I don't know what they are. A bunch but of Russians. Yeah, when I went to the uh, trunk show mm -hmm. at, at, Al, at Costa Mesa for Alan Edmonds, uh, I had people come up to me and they're like, hey, you're Preston from the Elegant Oxford. And I thought there's actually people coming up and talking to me. It was really surreal. Yeah, you've never, I mean, you really don't show your face no. on your channel, so how do they know that? I think it was because um, on Facebook, yeah, they can see a picture. They can see a picture of me. Mm -hmm. and. It's not like I've been hiding, I just... It's the way you film your videos. It's just you the know? way I film yeah. my videos. Um, 
So people always tell me, uh, who's behind that voice? I tell them, well, don't expect a lot, but <laughs> I guess this is, you know, my, uh, my face reveal right here. Yeah, that's funny. But, uh... So what's next? I mean, you know, kind of where do you see yourself taking the channel? That's a really good question. And I've thought a lot about it, um, where I'm going to go, what, what I'm going to do with the channel. I think I want to continue to shine. Um, I actually want to connect with people more. I mm -hmm. actually had uh, an opportunity to shine a pair of shoes for someone who's local. Mm -hmm. And I met him at the mall, and uh, he was there with his brother, and his brother had had an accident, and he was, uh, he was paralyzed, mm -hmm. but he had um, he started writing comics, and uh, I just was so inspired by his story. He had found this meaning and this purpose, and, and he, I guess he could have felt sorry for himself, but yeah. he just decided to go forward and do something he loved and, and with comics, and I thought that was so inspiring. I thought, I want to connect with people, and shoe shining was what brought us together. And uh, he's a gardener as well. He like has okay. his own garden at home. And I thought, do you garden? No, I don't garden. Okay. I just thought... I just thought that I have so much in my life that I'm not grateful for, mm -hmm. and that was so worth it. That was so worth going to meet him, and to uh, and to shine shoes. That was really something that I, I valued. I really I went home that evening and I, and I told my wife I was like, I feel so good right now. I feel like no matter what happens in my life, that everything's going to be fine. Just because there's people out there who face challenges and overcome them, and yeah. I just felt really good. And I thought if I could just continue that tradition and meet people and shine shoes with them. I would be happy. So I don't know what that. Well, we need some meetups, you know. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to translate into what I'll do in the future, but um, I don't know. I, I guess I could have uh, done anything else in life, but I know I'm doing something good when I, I don't feel like I I, I don't want to be anywhere else in my yeah. life. Like I just this yeah. is where I want to be. It's amazing how just something as simple as shining shoes can be transformative. I mean, we yeah. had a meetup in New York at Carmina. <clears throat> that was a lot of fun again to kind of meet these people that yeah. you know that you know maybe we comment back and forth with them <laughs> right. on the channel or maybe we don't we don't ever connect with them that way. But I met this one electrician who um, you know came in dressed very nicely and he said you know he said I've got to share a story with you. He said you know six months ago I never would have dressed like this. You know I would have been wearing you know jeans and a t-shirt or yeah. something. And he was on YouTube searching for you know Lord knows what. Yeah. And somehow one of our videos came up. You know, no kidding. I think it was a, our fifty dollar eBay challenge. Yeah. Right? And so for whatever reason, he watched it and he said, "Ah, uh, that's really interesting." And so he went out and bought a fifty dollar pair of shoes on eBay or a thrift store or something, yeah. and shined them up and restored them, and then you know went and bought a nice secondhand jacket on eBay. Yeah. And started dressing up, and he said, "You know, Kirby, you know, your channel and like you know this kind of philosophy is." totally changed my life. He said, now as an electrician, you know, I'd go to work every day wearing a suit and tie and my nice shoes. Whenever I get there, I change out of that yeah. into something to work in. Yeah. And he said, the quality of jobs that he's gotten have been totally different yeah. than what he got before. I, people do treat And he differently. said, it's, it's changed his life. And it's, yeah. again, you know, something small, but kind of going back to what you say, said earlier in terms of, you know, taking yourself seriously and just making good decisions. Sure. You know, if you take care of something and make a bunch of small good decisions, yeah, then you know over the course of ten years, I mean, you you can be in a totally different place Absolutely. than you would be otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I started thrifting. That's kind of one yeah. of my things that I do on my channel. Okay. Um, but I still enjoy it. I mean, I'm not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination, so I, I still thrift. Yeah, um, the absolutely. jacket I'm wearing, I thrifted for three dollars in Chula Vista in San Diego. Really amazing. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit $3. as well because I've gained some weight. Yeah, because uh, my wife's cooking, but um, <laughs> marriage will do it to you. I got it for three dollars, and um, I get most of my shoes on the secondhand market, and I restore them. So I've always been a, an avid thrifter. My brother and I, when we were younger, we'd go to thrift shops and look for cool stuff. And, and that seems like something your father kind of really passed yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, he likes thrift shops too. What's his craziest thrift story? I mean, what's like where you're just like, Dad, you've got to be kidding me. He um, he's found multiple pairs of shell cordovan shoes. Um, I'm trying to think of the craziest thing he's ever brought. I mean, non-shoe related. It doesn't have to be oh, shoes. Oh, non-shoe related. I mean, just he found. I think it was like an Arabic sword of some kind. I don't remember what. It, and we, my friends, we would they'd all come over and we'd play with it and we would bash it around, and we called it Arabian steel. I don't. We were just. It was like some. I don't know what kind of sword it was, but it was like this scimitar type of sword. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to it, but. We'd play with it all the time, and that, he's been thrifting that long. He's been going to thrift shops and running around doing stuff. That's funny. Um, and it's like it, you didn't get on like Antique Roadshow, and it's like you know worth 
millions of dollars or anything. My dad <laughs> is, he's so innocent. Like, he does not go forward looking to find stuff. He just goes and he just finds stuff. I don't know how he does it. And I'm like, Dad, you got to teach me your secret. Because I'm always trying to find something really cool. I think the best thing I ever found were a pair of Alden Shell Cordovan loafers. Yeah. For um, And not only Alden Shell Cordovan loafers, but that fit. Yeah. Well, these were actually not my size. Okay. And I restored them. Like, I went home and I was like, I got to make these look perfect. And uh, I put them online. I sold them. Yeah, that's, I think that's what and I did. And then use the money to buy a pair that fit. Yeah. I, uh... I, I forgot what I did with it. It was like a, uh, a year and a half ago, and that was the first time I ever found anything serious thrift shopping, and I thought, oh, I like doing this. So um, I, w I make my rounds here and there and go to different thrift shops, and sometimes I'm embarrassed. I'm like, I wonder if the cashier knows I come all the time. <laughs> they might think I'm like kind of Well, you crazy. know there's, I mean, Lux Swap, and I mean, he's got an eBay, uh, uh, eBay store. I mean, he <gasps> makes a ton of money thrifting yeah. in New England. You're kidding. Yes. I mean, he just goes from, check I mean, out. he drives around and goes from thrift store to thrift store in a predominantly affluent areas. Yeah. And he finds absolutely incredible stuff. Wow. I got to check that out. I know people like my thrift, uh, thrift store restoration challenge. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, but I did find those at a thrift shop. People are like, no, there's no way you find Alan Edmonds at thrift shops. I'm like, I do all the time. Well, you were saying, so what's your trick on thrift stores? Okay. So in thrifting, it's important to realize that you have to be consistent and patient because you could go to 10 thrift shops, find absolutely nothing, and the next day visit the same thrift shop and there'll be something there. And are you going to Goodwills or where? what type of stores? Um, I usually don't go to Goodwill because they end up not putting their best shoes out. They'll like put them online or as an auction. I go to no-name places where um, they'll put anything out mm -hmm. and you just got to look through and find, uh, find that treasure because it's there. Interesting. Yeah. So and the smaller the thrift store, almost the better because maybe it's less sophisticated. Yeah. Or, um, or less efficient. Yeah. Or uh, you just, I mean, I, I've gone to a thrift shop, went back the same next day, and I was like, there's going to be nothing there. I'm wasting my time. And that's when I found something. So I'll find something good once, one out of ten visits. And that can be really frustrating <coughs> going nine times and not finding anything. I mean, you'll feel like you just wasted an hour going out to thrift and you didn't find a thing. But it's just the consistent effort of going out and looking that will really pay off. Does your wife go thrifting with you? Does she enjoy that? Yeah, she's, well, she's always like, uh, she's always like, don't go thrifting, you're going to end up getting a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I got to, I got to be careful. But um, she's been really supportive in, uh, with the Elegant Oxford. Yeah. She's been really helpful. She's always, uh, she always tells me, I believe in you and you're the best. And I'm yeah, like, that's great. I'm like, honey, I shine used shoes for a living. Don't, don't, I'm not that great. <laughs> But she's always been really supportive. Well, you've had a big impact. I mean, you've gone from, you know, just under a few thousand subscribers to what you said you just, you're about to hit 80? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, uh, on August 11th, uh, I got monetized or I just barely, I had like a thousand. I mean, that's recent. That's less yeah. than two months ago. Yeah. And then, or a little over two months. I don't know. I woke up the next day and I had 5,000 more. And the next day I had a thousand more. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, Honey, what's going on? I Something. was like, what's going I was like, is this real? And then, um, I don't know, I just keep expecting it to just disappear. It feels really surreal. But I always get really nice comments. I actually had a comment, this lady, um, I, I, I'm really embarrassed, I forgot her name because I always respond to her comments. And she told me that, um, I think it's, Ang it's not Angelica, is it? Uh, Angela, her name's Angela. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry if it's the wrong name. She told me that she has um, diabetes and they had to uh, amputate her legs but that she still watches my channel and that she likes shiny <laughs> shoes. And I was like, my wow. wife was like, look at this comment, check this comment out. And I looked at it and I was like, this is amazing that that lady would comment that. And I just felt like, I guess these are real people. They're, they're telling me their story. And I try to respond to every comment. I feel really bad because I think people are like. A certain point is impossible though. Right. right. They'll be like, well, how come you haven't responded? Or did you, did you see my email? And I'm like, I really wish I could respond to everyone. Mm -hmm. But at some point it just gets overwhelming to try to respond to every email out there. Um, so I try to tell people I'm not ignoring you. I, I do see every comment, but I, I just can't sit read down. them all. At least yeah, so. I do. I see them I mean, all. I read, I read most them. all the comments. Right. But responding to all the comments, you know, can get really can overwhelming. Can get really pretty overwhelming. Yeah. So uh, you know, I got to find a solution to that. But I also get a lot of emails, uh, Facebook messages, Instagram messages that I can't answer either. And so, what do you charge? I mean, like, what's the bracket for just kind of shoe shine services? Right now, um, it's gone up since I started, but right now, uh, a shoe shine with a mirror shine is $50. Okay. And then if they want a, a patina or a burnish like that, <coughs> um, 
uh, it's it's a hundred dollars because okay. I have to strip the shoe, add the, the permanent dye, and then mirror shine the shoe mm -hmm. and get it all prepared. So it's a hundred dollars just because it takes yeah it takes me some time. Um, and so far, it's just been a lot of fun. I mean, people contact me and they're like, "Oh, um, can you do my shoes?" And and I and I sometimes I email them like, "I really wish I could right now, but I'm really far behind or I'm really uh, slammed." So if you'll just be patient, I'll take your shoes. Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. After you. There we go. I've never used one of these before. They're I've really got, cool. I've got to get you one. This is, you know, in cold water, you, yeah. we were kind of sharing is another trick. Yeah. You know, strangely makes a difference, right? Wow, yours is really shiny. Add a little oh. bit of that. A little bit of a head start. I did less talking than you. Okay, I don't want to <laughs> embarrass myself in front of the whole world. Let's see here. This one's looking better. I just... Uh, Gosh, it's amazing the transformation. I mean, again, these shoes, whenever I pulled them out to polish, I was thinking, you know, gosh, these really need a shine. Yeah. And now that we've spent, you know, what, an hour? Yeah. You know, doing this, I'm like, I, I can't believe I waited here. so long. Yeah. They look so much better. They do look a lot better. I'm really, uh... And you don't have to spend an hour to make the shoes look better. I mean, just a little bit of cream polish and quick <laughs> yeah. buff makes a difference. I usually have a little spray bottle or, uh... Oh, really? Yeah, I'm I put water in the, the tin and I'm yeah. like, uh -huh. I do that. Um, but cold water... I, that's where I learned it from was from well, your Olga channel. Olga Baluti is who I learned it from, and she uses ice water. She'll put ice in her. Yeah, I'll put a little, a little drop, a little cube in there, and then that'll help. Um, and she'll actually shine an entire pair of shoes just with the wax polish. Oh, nice. And it, that chin, it's just one or two layers, and then she uses ice-cold water and a lot of yeah. uh, friction, and it will light up a pair of shoes like you've never seen before, and but not crack because right. it's just one or two layers. Yeah, I saw a video by Crockett and Jones where the, the cobbler shows you how to do a high shine that won't crack, and it's just one or two layers with water, and it really brings out that shine for the rest of the shoe. And that's where, the, again, the high shine chamois or a really tightly woven chamois like what you have makes a big difference. Yeah. So your videos are a lot shorter than ours, right? I mean, we kind of go for right. the more is more right. philosophy and where you, you kind of have less, less yeah. is more. And you know, my videos are shorter simply because I don't have the memory on my SD card. Um, editing would take forever. So it's really just happened out of necessity. It's really? not because uh, I want to make them so short. People complain sometimes. They're like, that video was just too short. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I ran out of footage. There was nothing more I could talk about. Well, the principles are really quite short. The question is just how much do you show someone like running a chamois in right. circles? Right, yeah. And I run out of stories, even though I like to talk a lot. There's At some point, I just don't have anything more <laughs> anything to say. Anything else to say? Right. Yeah. Well, we are, you know, my, I mean, we, we like to do long format because I always feel like, you know, someone can always fast forward or, right. you know, I like to increase sure. my playback speed. Yeah. It's like one of my big things. So yeah. I'll watch most, most of my videos I watch at 2x. Oh, right. You know, um, it allows you to kind of blow through it. But you see more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt. But it's def absolutely fun. Uh, I mean, you know I edit on an iPhone. It's amazing. At home. And uh, I go to my washroom where, and I turn off the dryer. And I get clothes kind of around me and make a cave, and then I record my audio. Because if not, it's you can hear everything in the Every background. Every echo, yeah. So I, I just, that's kind of where I am. I'm going to buy foam at some point. Yes. But, We've uh, thought about putting foam on these walls. Yeah. Um, but I We just of, haven't ever, I mean, it's like, it, where does it stop is the problem. Right. I, I mean, just, this used to be my office. Oh, right. And then it became, you know, we've got these huge lights everywhere, yeah. and at some point I was like, I can't work in here. So right. I, like, I work in another room. The, yeah. And so this has become our full-time, the studio took over. The studio took over. And it takes a lot of time. Gosh, I feel like, you know, filming is probably where I spend the majority of my time. That's where I spend and my I time. And I don't even edit. Uh, yeah, editing can be a pain. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes the words just roll out and you can do narrating really fast. Sometimes I'm just stuck, like, unsure what to say having to look at the script or whatever. It can be really easy or really, really, really hard. Really hard, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it just you just hit it and it flows. Right, right. And then other times it's really work. Yeah, sometimes it can be really frustrating. And I right, uh, well, finish late. I think I'm done. How are you yeah, doing? I think I'm I had a, okay. a, you know, to your credit, or in all fairness, mm -hmm. I had uh, more time to shine than you did, but your shoes look great. Yeah. Shoot, you've done, you've done, you know, a fantastic job. So yeah, I like the, like the burnishing. So this burnishing right here is with just polish or leather dye? Um, well, it's kind of factory finish slash okay. polish. The, when I got the shoes, the entire cap was like chocolate brown. I guess it just came that way from the factory, but I didn't and like then it. And you've kind of slowly yeah, pulled I it off. Yeah, I removed it. And, did, you, uh, did you use an acetate to kind of pull that off? I did. I used an I started with a really cheap nail polish remover, but I upgraded to 100% acetone. Acetate, and just got, acetone, yeah. Yeah, got it all off and just left the toe dark. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the look. 
I guess yeah. it's my signature look. Everyone always contacts me about okay. toe patinas and all the that. Patina. Yeah, I'm the okay. walnut shoe. People like that uh, light to dark look and then the gradient from dark to light, light, and then lighter. Yeah. So that's something that's pretty. Uh, well, thanks for all your fun. great work and yeah, thanks, thanks for joining thanks us for and having coming me, down. Kobe. And it's been a pleasure. You know, we look forward to continuing to kind of help the well dressed uh, you know, take care Absolutely. of their wardrobes with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks.